what's up guys welcome to the second video today we are going to still uh, follow through the python arcade documentation tutorial and uh, i'll be explaining that to you through next uh, through a couple of uh, other episodes as well uh, feel free to skip through these videos i know it might be a bit simple for some of you but we will be going to explore some more advanced features and we will be putting them inside our game environment so uh, stay tuned for that and let's get started all right so first of all we need to define some other constant uh, variables inside our game environment since uh, we are going to control the uh, you know sprite scalings inside our environment uh, meaning that these are uh, like the game character, maybe uh, things that you will want to put inside your game, like enemies, and uh, I don't know, maybe you want to put a tree or something like that. You need to control the scalings, uh, so you can use uh, some constant variables that you uh, would be able to change uh, after you, uh, you know, implemented the game. So let's define the first one, which is uh, character scaling. I will be writing them as capital letters. Character scaling. Okay. I set it to one. Tile scaling. Set this one to 0 0.5. And coin scaling. Okay, so obviously uh, you need to set a, a value between 0 and 1 to control the scaling. So feel free to uh, play with these variables and see the effect inside your own game environment. Okay, the next step is to define our uh, sprite lists inside the init function. We will be setting these uh, variables to none or 0 inside init function so uh, let's just define them first uh, self dot coin list equals none self dot wall list equals none and for players self dot player list equals none so we define these lists so we can control the whole uh, set of sprites uh, using one variables. This is very important and very handy for us. And we can, for example, if you want to adjust the uh, wall positions, uh, you can just uh, append a wall sprite to this list. And uh, using this list, you can, uh, you know, apply any change you want to all of the walls so this is very handy method that is explained to us in the documentation uh, so another uh, variable we want to define here is uh, the player sprite so let's define it player sprite equals uh, none Okay, now we set up the setup function here. As we explained earlier, this is the place we want to set proper values for variables we defined inside init function. So let's get started with uh, the player list. Okay, we don't need much of options here. And uh, let's go for the wall list. Okay, now inside the uh, initializer for this class, we want to use uh, the special spatial hash, okay? The reason is to, you know, if this is set to true, this will uh, 
speed up the collision detection inside your game and this is a great uh, feature for static objects in your game but uh, the downside is that if you want to move that object it is not so great and it will make it slower so uh, use these for static uh, objects in your game to speed up your collision detection in those objects I suggest for example here we use the for the wall uh, for other environments you can use as well for example a rock or something that doesn't move of course a rock can move uh, depending on your game situation and scenario so let's just uh, set that to true sorry for that special hash and true okay let's do the same thing for coin list all right so now we will define the player sprite and we will set the proper value so to do that let's first uh, define the texture path for the sprite so let's define a image source uh, the reason you see uh, resources here uh, is that we are using the textures of the library itself so you have to put that in front of your uh, path so you can explore uh, more textures uh, in that uh, directory inside your uh, uh, virtual environment so uh, try to explore other uh, textures as well so now we have to set the sprite self player right and uh, okay yep let's set it to arcade dot sprite image source and let's set the scaling which is character scaling okay now we have to set uh, two other attributes for our player sprite which are the X and Y initial positions so we will be using center x and center y attributes to set those uh, let's do that player sprite center x equals 64 self dot player sprite center y equals 128 and uh, after we are done with the player sprite we have to append it to the player list that we just created in line 23 so let's append our new sprite using the append uh, command in player list self dot player list append self dot player sprite now we want to set our uh, walls so let's do that using a for loop range uh, 0 to 50 and uh, 64 okay the reason uh, I set the step uh, to 64 is that uh, the size of the wall texture is 64 so I would like to uh, on each loop past that size and put the next wall uh, next to the uh, previous wall so this is the reason we are using 64 for the step inside the range now let's uh, define a wall using arcade.sprite let's uh, set the texture and uh, let's set the tile scaling now we want to set the uh, center x to x and we would like to set the center y for all the walls that it's are going to be drowned to 32 
uh, let's uh, finally let's just add each wall to the wall list wall the next step is to uh, create some coordinates for the crates that we want to place inside our game environment this is because we want to uh, place some crates so user can jump through it and we want some customized positions for those uh, crates so let's define a coordinate list we will create a list here another list within that list let's define three lists so first one is going to be to 96 second one is going to be 56 uh, 96 and the third one is 568 uh, 96 okay uh, we will be using a for loop to create those crates as we did for the walls so let's use our for loop for coordinate in coordinate list and let's create our uh, crates arcade dot sprite this is the texture for crates and we will be using the tile scaling for the um, crate and let's define the position as we did with a new attribute which is position so instead of uh, defining them separately using center x and center y you can define the initial position uh, using attribute position which uh, gets a list and the first value in that list should be the x coordinate and the next, second one is going to be your uh, y coordinate so uh, let's set that to the list we just defined coordinate and uh, finally we want to append that uh, box grade to the uh, wall list in this case since we are not defining a separate list for the crates but you can do that as well so let's append that sorry wall list append the wall okay all right so one more step before going through the uh, game and run it let's uh, draw the sprites that we just defined we can use that uh, we can initiate the drawing mechanism uh, using the list that we defined uh, so let's do that by calling the wall list first and call the uh, draw function solve that player lists call the draw function that uh, coin list and call the uh, draw function uh, for now we haven't uh, defined the coins yet but we will be doing that in the next uh, episodes one more thing is that I changed the screen height here to 650 so don't forget to change that if you want to do the exact same thing as the tutorial so let's uh, run the game and see how it looks okay as you can see uh, changes are here you can see the uh, walls that we defined the box crates and the character right now we we don't have an interactive uh, environment we just uh, set the environment statically in the next episodes we will be going to make this environment more dynamic uh, you know move these sprites and do some more changes to the game environment so I'll see you in the next episode